Hey, I'm Charlie Lovett, author of Escaping Dreamland, and in this video, I'll be exploring my top five favorite New York sites from the book that aren't there anymore. A big chunk of my novel is set in 1906, and New York was a very different city back then. Here are some of the places that define the New York area of that era, but are long gone. Number five, Child's Restaurant. There were several locations of one of America's first chain restaurants around the city, but my characters dined at the one on 23rd Street. Child's was one of the few places in New York in 1906 where a single woman could dine alone without causing a scandal. The menu's not unlike a typical New York diner of today, though it's harder to get graham crackers and milk these days. Number four, Wardenclyffe Tower. Though not strictly in New York City, this imposing structure on Long Island was the brainchild of inventor Nikola Tesla. One of my characters works for Tesla, so I learned all about Wardenclyffe, Tesla's attempt to master long-range transmission of messages. The laboratory at the base was designed by another of my characters, Stanford White. The tower stood from 1901 to 1917. Third on my list is the place where my characters Magda, Tom, and Jean see the New York Giants eke out a win over the Pittsburgh Pirates in the summer of 1906. The polo ground stood at 155th Street until it burned down in 1911. You might think that number two, Madison Square Garden, is still around, but there have actually been four Madison Square Gardens over the years. This is the second one, designed again by Stanford White, and standing on 26th Street and Madison Avenue, where it opened in 1890. White actually had a private apartment in the tower that rose over the garden, and the building boasted a summertime rooftop theater where a dramatic event in Escaping Dreamland takes place. But of course, my number one New York site that's not there anymore is Dreamland itself, the amusement park on Coney Island that opened in 1904 and featured rides, circus acts, wild animals, swimming, and much, much more, all viewable from the top of Beacon Tower. At night, Dreamland was illuminated with a million bulbs, giving the entire park a surreal, fairy-like feeling. If you want to know more about these long-lost New York sites, you can read all about them in Escaping Dreamland. I hope to see you on my virtual book tour, and remember, you can order Escaping Dreamland wherever books are sold.